In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build your own smart home desk controller for your standing desks. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. I've been working on this little touchscreen project that allows me to switch out my physical desk button controller in place for this touchscreen one. Using the touchscreen, I'm able to control the desk height and also access the desk presets. I'm also able to do things like control my lights, my fans, and pretty much any other device that I've got connected to Home Assistant. Following along with this project, you should end up with something similar that you can customize with your own Home Assistant entities and also customize and design your own screen. Everything that you'll need to get started with this project is all linked in the description below, as well as any of the files and bits of code that we're gonna be using. For this project, I've been using some of FlexiSpot standing desks, and what's nice about FlexiSpot's desk is they've got this additional control port that we can use to power our controller and also send desk commands. FlexiSpot uses a desk controller that is available on other standing desks, so just check the maker model of your controller, and I'll have some of the models that are compatible with this design all listed in the description below. The main component that I'm using in this project is this little 3.2 inch Nextian TFT display and you can pick these up directly from Amazon or over at ITAD. The display is available in a range of different sizes but the one that I'm using is the 3.2 inch. You can also find a 3.5, a 2.4 and some other bigger and some other smaller ones but the 3.2 is the one that I'm using. Some of the other components that we'll need is an ESP32, an Ethernet cable, a micro USB, some DuPont wires, a USB serial adapter, and the one that I'm making use of is my favorite FT232, but you can use whichever you want. There's also some optional additional components, and some of these you may want to use if you don't want to do any soldering. For this project, I didn't do any soldering with this V1, but the additional parts are things like Wago clips, an Ethernet pinout board, and an SD card if you don't have any USB flashing device like the FT232. Having access to a 3D printer is also ideal for this project if you want to create your own enclosure. So if you or a friend doesn't have one that you can use, you can make use of sites such as PCBWay, which conveniently are the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay are your one-stop shop for CNC, 3D printing, PCB design and assembly, and much, much more. If you've got a smart home sensor or a little gadget or idea that you want to see brought to life, just like this 3D printed desk controller, then head over to PCBWay and get started today. As I'm making use of some of the Nextian displays, I'm also going to be making use of the Nextian editor to actually set up and design my own touchscreen UIs. It is possible to do this without the Nextian editor, but there is a bit of code involved and I'm not going to be showing that process in this video. As well as the Nextian editor, the other bits of software you're going to need to have set up and installed are Home Assistant and also ESP Home. To get started, we're going to first need to download and install the Nextin editor. And again, you can find a link to everything that you'll need for this project, all in the description below. And that's all the files, code, and bits of hardware you'll need. With the Nextin editor now opened up, we're going to need to just open up the HMI file that I provided. And inside of here, we have access to the code that's going to be loaded onto the screen. I'm not going to be running through the Nextin editor in full detail, but if you would like to know a bit more about it or maybe see a more in-depth tutorial on actually using it, then do let me know in the comments below. Essentially, with this demo, we've got four pages. We've got the home page, the lights page, a desk page, and a notification page. Pressing on some of these buttons basically just act as navigation buttons, and it just tells the page to move to another page. All of this processing is done on the screen and the screen is aware of the pages and it can move between them without any input from the ESP. Some of the other buttons just expose an input where we can use the ID and button press from that button for the ESP to understand and know that a button's been pressed and we can tie that then to an action. For example, pressing a button will turn on a light in Home Assistant. Don't worry too much about this if you're following along. It does become a little bit easier after you've had a little play around with it. But that's the basics of it. We use the editor to design our screen, but then we expose some actions and elements that we're going to use the ESP to actually control. To actually get the code onto our screen, we're going to need to flash it, and there's two ways of doing this. We can either save the HMI file directly onto an SD card, and then we can put the SD card into the screen and power it on. This will then cause whatever's on the card to flash to the screen, and once you take the card out, whatever display you loaded will just automatically be on the screen when you power it up. The second method, which is actually the way that I prefer to do it, is just using the FT232 to write the files directly to the screen. 
You can use whichever method is more accessible and convenient for you. I personally prefer the FT232 just because that powers it and does everything all in one. If we're using a USB, then we'll need to press the upload button. And when you press this, it does take the next in editor a few seconds to actually wake up and realize that something's happening. Once it does wake up and it realizes that something's happening, you'll be prompted with this little box which will ask you to select the COM port that your device is connected to. By default, it does have an auto search option, but if you've got lots of things connected to your machine, this will take a little while. It's easier to just click the drop down and then unplug and replug your device to see which one changes. I happen to know that my one is COM port 5, so I'll just select that and then press go. The first time that you flash the files to your screen will take the longest amount of time just because it's the first one and it needs to write all of the files. Any following flashes that come after this will be much quicker because the screen understands parts that it already has and it can just skip straight over those if they haven't changed. During the writing process you'll see a little writing bar on the screen and once that completes our screen will refresh and you'll be good to go. You should now be able to see that little menu on the screen where we can swap between the pages by just simply pressing the navigation buttons on the screen. So that's the screen setup. The next thing we're gonna to need to set up is the brain. And the brains of our operation is the ESP32 and we'll need to flash some code onto this. For the ESP side of things, we're gonna first need to create a new device to enter our code into. So head over to ESP home and we're gonna select new device in the bottom right corner. We'll then need to give our device a name and select next. From here, we'll just select skip this step. Then from the device type, we're gonna select ESP32. And then the final option is we're just gonna press skip. Now in ESP Home, you should be able to see this brand new device that's been created, and we're going to select Edit. Inside of this new file, we can see that ESP Home's pre-populated it with a bunch of code, but we're going to just delete all of this. What we'll now do is head over to GitHub, and we're going to copy the code that I provided. At the time of recording, this code is almost 700 lines long, and that might seem really intimidating and like a lot, but don't worry about it. The only parts that we're going to be changing is just the five top sections at the top of the file. With your code copied to your clipboard, head back to ESP Home and you're just going to paste that code into the file. At the very top of the file, you should see that this file has been broken down into five sections and it's in these five sections where you're going to need to replace values in order for this to work with your own setup. The first section is just to do with the device name in, so modify this section to adjust the device names of your device. The second section is all about the minimum and maximum height, so set these to be whatever you want ESP Home to push the desk to or to lower it to. Different desks and different desk setups will all have different height ranges, so just put in a value that works for you. The third section is all of the different credentials that you'll need to set, so here is just the Wi-Fi and the AP passwords. I'm making use of secrets for mine, but if you're not, you can just put values here. Section four then is to do with the notification page. So this is the title and the message that gets displayed on the page. For both of these, we'll need to create helper text entities and these can be created within the helper section. Whatever you set here will need to be whatever you set this value to. So in my case, my helper is called notification title and notification message. If you change these to be something else, you just need to make sure you update these values here. The next item in that list I'm just going to skip over because I make use of this virtual screen just to have a nice convenient switch to turn on and off the display. The fifth and final section then is all to do with the buttons. So these are the five different buttons that you can set on the light page. If you're customizing and changing your design up a little bit and you make use of other buttons, you could just put them in here as well and you'll just need to set those within the code. But using this as a template I think is quite a nice way to actually figure out what's going on with the code. If you're just making use of the code that I provided, all you'll need to do here is just modify the buttons and modify the Home Assistant entities to match various switches and lights within your own home. So for example, if you happen to have a light called downstairs light, you just swap that value out there to be downstairs light. I hope that makes a bit more sense. And in the future, I do plan on making use of a blueprint and doing some of this mapping for you and just trying to make it a lot easier, but it's like this for now. Once you're happy with all of your changes, you can go ahead and click install in the top right corner. We'll then select plug into this computer. And from here, we'll just need to plug our device in. If we plug our device in now, we should see it pop up in that list. And in my case, I can see that my device has appeared on COM port five. So I'm gonna select that and then hit connect. Once the installation completes, you should hopefully see the congratulations message and you can just go ahead and press close. 
In the bottom left, we should see a little icon on the notification bell. And if we select that, we should see that new devices have been discovered. So go ahead and press the check it out. This should jump us over to our integrations and we should be able to see the new ESP home device that we've created. And in my case, it's the FlexiSpot E7Q, which is just the name of my desk controller. And I'm gonna go ahead and press add. It will then just ask us if we're sure we wanna add this to our home assistant and we'll just press submit. And with that done, we can just assign the device to an area and then press finish. In the ESP homepage, you should now be able to see this brand new device that we've just added. But before we select the device, we first just need to configure it to give it access to our home assistant to allow it to control our devices like our lights and fans and other bits. Next to the device we've just added, we should see configure. So let's go ahead and select this. In the configuration options, we've got two options. We've got the option to allow the device to perform home assistant actions. And we've also got the option of subscribing to the home assistant logs. In order for this device to be able to control our Home Assistant, you'll need to select the Allow the Device option. If you want to be able to see any errors or logs from your device, you can also select this other option, but this one's optional for you. For me, I'm just going to leave this one off for now, and I'm going to go ahead and press Submit. You should then see the success message, and we're going to select Finish, and then we're going to select our device. Inside of this device page, you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of different controls that our device is able to access and use. So we've got the option for raising and lowering the desk. We've got a button for desk down, which will lower the desk to whatever the minimum point is. We've got the desk height, which will actually allow you to just enter a value that you want the desk to move to. We've got desk up, which will put the desk at its maximum point. You'll then see we've got all these different options for go to page. And what these will do is selecting this button will actually launch the page on the device. So for example, if we selected go to lights page, it would open the lights page on the screen. A little bit further down, you'll see we've got some sensors. We've got the current page label, which will tell us what page the device is currently on. We've got the desk current height and we've got the uptime. Just below that, we've got configuration and diagnostics. The only one that we're really bothered about here is this virtual screen and you'll see that we've got this little toggle switch. Toggling this on and off will actually turn the display on and off. And you'll notice at this point we've talked a lot about the display but we don't actually have the display and the ESP connected. So let's do that now. There's a few different ways that you can go about connecting all of these components up but the way that I'm showing you is just the way that I've chosen to do it. I'm still very much in the early experimented stages and I do plan on adding a few extra things like speakers and a couple of other little sensors. So keeping everything loose and not soldered has been very important to me. On my original prototype, I'd spliced an ethernet cable and just Wago clipped the ends of the cables with some DuPont connectors and then wired everything up to the ESP like that. And while this all worked well, it was pretty messy. So on the next iteration, which is actually where we are currently, I've opted to make use of the ethernet pinout board and this allows me to simply and more importantly tidily just link all the pinouts directly to the ESP. The other nice thing about using the pinout board is the fact that we can just connect an ethernet cable directly from the board straight into the controller and this will allow it to pass through all of the comms and power. Here's a very quick diagram to show you how I've wired everything up. The diagrams and documents are all available on GitHub. So if you've got any suggestions for improvements or better still, you can actually improve the diagrams and make them better, then please feel free to do so. If you've been following along with the code and you've wired everything up like in the diagram, then you should now have some spaghetti like this. If you now take an ethernet cable and attach it to your project, then attach the other end to your desk controller, everything should start up and you should now be able to control everything. Using the lights page, you should be able to turn on and off any of the devices that you've set to these buttons. Using the desk page, you should be able to move your desk up and down. And if you set any notifications using the title and notification message, you should be able to view these in the notification page. So we've tested it out. The buttons all do what they should do. They turn on and off lights. They make the desk go up and down. And it all just seems to be functioning great. So let's take this from a bit of cable spaghetti and just put it inside of an enclosure. I quickly designed and mocked up this prototype desk mount that basically has a little box section on the back where all of the ESP and all of the cables just all squish into. It's a little ugly, but it's much better than the original Frankenstein one that I featured a couple of weeks ago, where that one was just a whole bunch of Wago clips and an ethernet cable. So with everything wired up, I can just squish the cables and the ESP inside of the little box and I can plug the ethernet into the desk controller. The only thing left to do now is just attach the controller to the bottom of your desk and you're good to go. And there we go guys, that's been a little look at how to set up and build your own smart desk controller. 
This whole project has basically been version one of my idea, and I do have a version two planned where I plan on adding a speaker, maybe some other sensors, improving the UI, improving the enclosure, and potentially even creating my own PCB to allow me to just not have this big spaghetti mess with Wagos and cables everywhere, but we'll see. If you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit the subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.